This is a battery and this is exactly how much power it has left. And I can see this thanks to this thing, which is called a battery monitor. I get questions about it every time I use it. And in this video, we're gonna answer all of them. We'll talk about the one thing that separates a battery monitor from all the pretenders, how to set it up and what it looks like in action. Let's get started. The core feature of a battery monitor is precise battery level tracking. It answers the question, how much battery do I have left? And in order to do that, a battery monitor has to have a shunt, which is this thing. And they all look pretty much exactly like this. However, when you go to Amazon and search battery monitor, you'll see a lot of devices without shunts that are labeled as battery monitors. And they are usually devices that estimate battery level by measuring something like battery voltage. They're not nearly as accurate and they're not what we're talking about in this video. We're talking about battery monitors with shunts. I tested four of the most popular battery monitors for a month and I made a whole video about that, which I'll link below. But my favorite one overall was this one, the Victron Smart Shunt. And my favorite budget option was this one here, which has a screen and it is the Ailey 500 amp ba battery monitor. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is install and set up both of them and you'll get to see them in action. You will need a couple things to install a battery monitor, a ratchet or something to tighten and loosen bolts, and then a black battery cable whose ring connectors can fit obviously on the bolts for your battery, but also on the bolts for your battery monitor, which tend to be a bit bigger. This part is important. The battery should be fully charged before you start and not just mostly charged, but 100% charged. You'll see why in a bit but use some solar panels or your battery charger and charge it up. Oh, and it's always a good idea to use safety glasses and gloves. We don't wanna get shocked now, do we? Okay, now we are ready to start. The first thing is to disconnect your battery from the rest of your system. If you have solar panels, if this is a solar panel system, then remember to disconnect your solar panels first, always disconnect your solar panels first, uh, and then you can disconnect the battery. So I'm just gonna grab my ratchet and I'm gonna disconnect it from the rest of my system. Now grab your battery monitor's shunt. I'll use the smart shunt, but just know that basically every shunt follows these exact same steps. Uh, this is a good time, actually it's the best time, to mount the shunt. I won't cover mounting <laughs> because I covered that in the review video where I talked about all the different ways to mount all the different shunts. But for the smart shunt, the easiest way to mount it by far is with some double-sided mounting tape, which I have here. So I'm just gonna tape it to the battery using this tape. And that's it, it's pretty easy. Now look at the shunt's terminals and find the one that's labeled battery minus or battery negative. That is the terminal you're gonna connect to the negative battery terminal. So this is the terminal labeled battery minus. So I am going to now connect it to the negative battery terminal with this black battery cable. This is why it should be black because it is, it is being connected to the negative battery terminal. I'm just gonna unscrew this bolt, thread on this battery cable, tighten that back. And then I'm gonna connect this ring terminal to the battery terminal. And I'll use my ratchet to tighten everything. Hey, so I just realized that the step that is listed next in the installation guides is normally the step that I do last and I film myself doing it that way. I've never had an issue with the way I do it, but I want this video to follow what the guide says. So I am gonna add that step in here now. So following the guide, what we do next is we reconnect the system negative, but you don't reconnect it to the battery terminal you connect it to the battery monitor's terminal. So find the terminal on your battery monitor that's labeled system negative or system minus, which for me is this one here, and then connect the system negative cable to that terminal. I'm just unscrewing the bolt, threading it through the cable, and then tightening the bolt back onto the shunt. Now that that's done, I'll continue with the installation the way I initially filmed it. Nothing else will be affected, but you'll just have to pretend that this cable is connected for the remaining steps. 
Now grab the red power cord that came with your battery monitor and you are gonna connect it from one of these little ports that's on the shunt to the positive battery terminal. That's gonna be what powers the shunt. So I'm plugging this into the right terminal on the smart shunt. And now I'm gonna connect its ring terminal to the positive battery terminal and the shunt will get power. And while you're doing this, reconnect the system positive at this point, if this is how your system is set up, because if you didn't, later on you'd have to unscrew the bolt and remove this, which would uh, cut power to the shunt and cause it to reset, which we don't want. So I'm going to connect to the shunt's uh, positive power cord and my system's positive terminal to the battery's positive terminal in one go. So I'm just gonna grab both of these ring connectors, thread them through there, tighten the bolt on terminal and tighten it with a ratchet. Now the shunt is powered on and you cannot see it probably, but there is a little blue light flashing, letting me know it's connected, it is powered on. Okay, the smart shunt is connected to our battery and now it is time to set it up. For monitors like the Ailey, at this point, really the only extra step you'd have to do is plug the screen into the shunt. There's usually a little terminal on there, it just plugs right in. Uh, and then that would give the screen power and you would use the screen to set up the monitor. But the Victron Smart Shunt does not have a screen. It has Bluetooth built in, so we are gonna set it up using our phone. Uh, I'm just chiming in to say that if this is starting to feel a little complex, then that's okay. I'll talk about some alternatives to battery monitors at the end of this video. You connect the Smart Shunt in particular to your phone using the Victron Connect app. So download it if you need to, open it up, and you'll see a list of devices. You might have to do some software updates when you first do that, so do that if necessary. I'm gonna click on the Smart Shunt, and you might have to enter a pin, it's six zeros by default, and then it will connect. <laughs> and there you have it. The Smart Shunt is connected to my phone, and look at that, we have the big, beautiful battery state of charge right there. Now, because battery monitors can work with a ton of different battery voltages and battery capacities, we have to tell it a bit about our battery, like its capacity, charging voltage, that kind of thing. This is the point where you're just gonna need to consult your battery monitor's product manual. I'm gonna do it by going to the settings in the Victron Connect app. Right away, it asks me to set the battery capacity. I'm using a 100 amp hour battery, so I'll put in 100. And then it asks me if I'm using an aux input. This is specific to Victron, and I am not using an aux input, so I'm gonna hit none. And now, if I click on battery, I can adjust things like charging voltage and some other things. Uh, it defaults to what appears to be a lead acid battery profile, so I'm gonna update all these settings based on Victron's recommendation for a lithium iron phosphate battery. And on this one, I can set state of charge, but most battery monitors default to 100% and they don't let you adjust it very much. So that's why it's important to fully charge your battery before installing a battery monitor. And if we go back, it's set up. And now this monitor knows what kind of battery we're using and it's ready to track the energy coming in and out of it. Everything is set up, now let's see it in action. I connected this inverter and this lamp, which has an incandescent bulb inside of it. And I can see in the app, uh, thanks to the battery monitor, that the lamp and the inverter are pulling a combined 64 watts from the battery. And I can also see what that works out to in terms of current and, and what the battery voltage is. I let the lamp run for a little bit and the battery is now sitting at 98%. So I just rigged up a quick solar panel system. By turning that switch, just connected a 100 watt solar panel outside to the charge controller. So we should start seeing, there we go. We're starting to see 
some solar uh, some solar charging trickle in. So it's maxing out at around 63 watts. It's like 5 p.m. So that's actually pretty good for the time of day. For most battery monitors, you just have a screen. So the information that we are seeing in the app here would be on the screen. And it might not have all the same information, like it might not have an estimate of time remaining, but you'll see the most important stuff like state of charge, you know, input current, output current, input wattage, output wattage, battery voltage, that sort of stuff. And that's really the basics of battery monitors. We'll talk about alternatives in just a sec, but now you know how to install one, how to set it up, and how to use it to track energy coming in and out of your battery, and let's be honest, most importantly, how to see how much battery you have left. What do you do if you don't wanna use a battery monitor? So I'll just get this out of the way here. But there is a way you can estimate battery state of charge by measuring the battery voltage with a multimeter, or you can buy something called a voltage meter. So I just measure the battery voltage at the terminals, and you might be able to see it, but it says 13.66. So that means this is a fully charged lithium iron phosphate battery but this isn't really what I'm talking about. An actual alternative to a battery monitor is a smart battery, which is a battery with Bluetooth built in. And then there's an app provided by the brand. So you can basically get the functionality we got from the smart chunt, but built in to the battery. This isn't a smart battery, but they do look essentially identical to regular lithium batteries. And if you're open to rethinking your entire system quite a bit, you could always just buy a portable power station the good ones tell you battery percentage, charging and discharging rate, time remaining on the screen, as well as in the brand's mobile app. It's not DIY, but the prices on these are now getting really competitive with DIY solar systems. So the next time you see a video with a battery percentage screen like this one, you'll know exactly where it came from and how to do it yourself. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.